If in the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess, any one is found slain, lying in the open country, and it is not known who killed him, then your elders and your judges shall come forth, and they shall measure the distance to the cities which are around him that is slain. And the elders of the city which is nearest to the slain man shall take a heifer which has never been worked and which has not pulled in the yoke. And the elders of that city shall bring the heifer down to, to a valley with running water, which is neither plowed nor sown, and shall break the heifer's neck there in the valley. And the priests and the sons of Levi shall come forward, for the Lord your God has chosen them to minister to him and to bless in the name of the Lord. And by their word, every dispute and every assault shall be settled. And all the elders of that city nearest to the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer, whose neck was broken in the valley. And they shall testify, Our hands did not shed this blood, neither did our eye see it shed. Forgive, O Lord, your people Israel, whom you have redeemed, and set not the guilt of innocent blood in the midst of your people Israel, but let the guilt of blood be forgiven them. So you shall purge the guilt of innocent blood from your midst, when you do what is right in the sight of the Lord. When you go forth to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God gives them into your hands, and you take them captive, and see among the captives a beautiful woman, and you have desire for her, and would take her for yourself as wife, then you shall bring her home to your house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails, and she shall put off her captive's garb, and shall remain in your house and bewail her father and her mother a full month. After that you may go into her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. Then if you have no delight in her, you shall let her go where she will, but you shall not sell her for money, you shall not treat her as a slave, since you have humiliated her. If a man has two wives, the one loved and the other disliked, and they have borne him children, both the loved and the disliked, and if the firstborn son is hers that is disliked, then on the day when he assigns his possessions as an inheritance to his sons, he may not treat the son of the loved as the firstborn in preference to the son of the disliked, who is the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the disliked, by giving him a double portion of all that he has, for he is the first issue of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son, who will not obey the voice of his father, or the voice of his mother, and though they chastise him, will not give heed to them, then his father and his mother shall take hold of him, and bring him out to the elders of his city, at the gate of the place where he lives. And they shall say to the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious, he will not obey our voice, he is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of the city shall stone him to death with stones, so you shall purge the evil from your midst, and all Israel shall hear and fear. And if a man has committed a crime punishable by death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon a tree, but you shall bury him the same day, for a hanged man is accursed by God. You shall not defile your land, which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance. You shall not see your brother's ox or his sheep go astray, and withhold your help from them. You shall take them back to your brother. And if he is not near you, or if you do not know him, you shall bring it home to your house, and it shall be with you until your brother seeks it. Then you shall restore it to him. And so you shall do with his donkey, so you shall do with his garment. So you shall do with any lost thing of your brother's, which he loses and you find. You may not withhold your help. You shall not see your brother's donkey or his ox fallen down by the way, and withhold your help from them. You shall help him to lift them up again. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. If you chance to come upon a bird's nest, in any tree or on the ground, with young ones or eggs, and the mother sitting upon the young or upon the eggs, you shall not take the mother with the young. You shall let the mother go. But the young you may take to yourself, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long. When you build a new house, you shall make a parapet for your roof, that you may not bring the guilt of blood upon your house, if any one fall from it. You shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed, lest the whole yield be forfeited to the sanctuary, 
the crop which you have sown, and the yield of the vineyard. You shall not plow with an ox or a donkey together. You shall not wear a mingled stuff, wool and linen together. You shall make yourself tassels on the four corners of your cloak with which you cover yourself. If any man takes a wife and goes into her and then spurns her and charges her with shameful conduct and brings an evil name upon her, saying, I took this woman, and when I came near her, I did not find in her the tokens of virginity. Then the father of the young woman and her mother shall take and bring out the tokens of her virginity to the elders of the city in the gate. And the father of the young man shall say to the elders, I gave my daughter to this man to wife, and he spurns her, and behold, he has made shameful charges against her, saying, I did not find in your daughter the tokens of virginity. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the garment before the elders of the city. Then the elders of that city shall take the man and whip him, and they shall fine him a hundred shekels of silver, and give them to the father of the young woman, because he has brought an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. But if the thing is true, that the tokens of virginity were not found in the young woman, then they shall bring out the young woman to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her to death with stones, because she has wrought folly in Israel by playing the harlot in her father's house. So you shall purge the evil from the midst of you. If a man is found lying with the wife of another man, both of them shall die, the man who lay with the woman and the woman. So you shall purge the evil from Israel. If there is a betrothed virgin, and a man meets her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city, and you shall stone them to death with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry for help, though she was in the city, and the man, because he violated his neighbor's wife. So you shall purge the evil from the midst of you. But if in the open country a man meets a young woman who is betrothed, and the man seizes her and lies with her, then only the man who lay with her shall die. But to the young woman you shall do nothing. In the young woman there is no offense punishable by death, for this case is like that of a man attacking and murdering his neighbor. Because he came upon her in the open country, and though the betrothed young woman cried for help, there was no one to rescue her. If a man meets a virgin who was not betrothed, and seizes her, and lies with her, and they are found, then the man who lay with her shall give to the father of the young woman fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he has violated her. He may not put her away all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor shall he uncover her who is his father's. A Maskell of Asaph O God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have gotten of old, which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Direct your steps to the perpetual ruins. The enemy has destroyed everything in the sanctuary. Your foes have roared in the midst of your holy place. They set up their own signs for signs. At the upper entrance, they hacked the wooden trellis with axes. And then all its carved wood they broke down with hatches and hammers. They set your sanctuary on fire to the ground. They desecrated the dwelling place of your name. They said to themselves, We will utterly subdue them. They burned all the meeting places of God in the land. We do not see our signs. There is no longer any prophet, and there is none among us who knows how long. How long, O God, is the foe to scoff? Is the enemy to revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand? Why do you keep your right hand in your bosom? Yet God, my King, is from of old working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the dragons on the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. You cut open springs and brooks. You dried up ever-flowing streams. Yours is the day, yours also the night. You have established the luminaries and the sun. You have fixed all the bounds of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Remember this, O Lord, how the enemy scoffs, and an impious people reviles your name. Do not deliver the soul of your dove to the wild beasts. Do not forget the souls of your poor forever. Have regard for your covenant, for the dark places of the land are full 
of the habitations of violence. Let not the humble be put to shame. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, plead your cause. Remember how the impious scoff at you all the day. Do not forget the clamor of your foes, the uproar of your adversaries, which goes up continually. Now the time came for Elizabeth to be delivered, and she gave birth to a son. And her neighbors and kinsfolk heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they would have named him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, Not so, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your kindred is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all marveled. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed. And he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, what then will this child be? For the, for the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies, and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Much of today's reading from Deuteronomy is based on the idea of anticipation. As God's people prepare to enter the promised land, they're given many stipulations for different social and legal circumstances that may arise. Many of these instructions are meant to deal with the problem of sin. They are not, however, definitive solutions. Jesus even says in the Gospels that at times Moses allowed concessions because of the hardness of Israel's heart, but in the beginning it was not so. Jesus wants to return humanity to a state of purity. He desires to lift his people from the burden of sin and the laws of Deuteronomy, which in many ways acted merely as a stopgap measure against sin. Once again, we see Deuteronomy anticipating the need for a savior. Similarly, in the Gospel of Luke, we read the story of the birth of John the Baptist, the herald of the king, whose birth anticipates the Lord's salvation. Zechariah, John's father, sings his famous Benedictus hymn, which is a commentary on how the long-awaited reign of sin and darkness is, at long last, coming to a close. Do you truly relish the freedom from sin and darkness won for us by Christ?